Bertrand Russell once said, the whole problem with the world is that fools and fanatics are always so certain of themselves and wiser people so full of doubts. The reason that's true is that wiser people have a much more intimate relationship with knowledge. Their experience with it gives them greater self-awareness and truly informs them of just how much they don't know. That humility generates a certain respect for that knowledge. Thus, they will be less inclined to speak on matters in which they are not confident. Fools and fanatics have no such restraint. Sadly, for that very reason, they are often able to convince more people than a wiser person can. Why? Because they appear confident, and so they seem knowledgeable. That's why a fool can defeat a genius in a debate if the victor is determined not by the truth, but by how many people they sway. Technically, a fool could have been wrong every step of the way, yet still they could convince more people. That is because they will naturally appear more confident in what they say. The prefix con, found in con artist and con man, comes from the word confidence. A confidence man tricks people out of their money. A confidence man seems to have solid answers. Someone who is honest and wise, however, someone without ulterior motives, will be much more willing to say, I don't know. Unfortunately, many people see that as a weakness. They'll gladly accept a confident wrong answer rather than a much more accurate, speculative answer followed by an I don't know for sure, though. A confidence man might say, let me invest your money and I'm 100% sure I can double it. Whereas an experienced investor might say, I think I can bring you a positive return, but there's no guarantees. Religious apologists regularly take advantage of agnostic atheists in this way. They'll confidently assert things they can't possibly know about God, morality, uh, the nature of the universe, and the afterlife. Meanwhile, the agnostic atheist will admit that they can't say they know for sure, but that they merely disbelieve, even if they have good reasons to disbelieve. That requires a greater respect for epistemology. Yet some theists, like presuppositionalists or divine command theorists, mistake that as a weakness, thinking that the question, how do you know that, is some great gotcha question if the answer is, well, I don't know for sure. They mistake certainty with correctness, you see. They claim to know God exists with utmost confidence. So if you claim that you don't know for sure, then they win by default. It's like arguing with a toddler. And of course, the motivation for such beliefs can be rife with conceit. It's an easy way to think you're right no matter what. God serves as the objective proxy for your opinions, which are directly tied to your identity. If God is unassailable, then so too are you. Neat, convenient, cheap, easy. Never mind that you've been wrong about a million other things in the past. You get to be right about this, because you think God told you so. And nobody can prove otherwise. It's the ultimate safe space. But there is disagreement even between people who claim to have knowledge given directly to them by God himself. So clearly that belief is not a very reliable claim to knowledge because a lot of people who have that belief are necessarily wrong. And speaking of how do you know questions, how do you know you are not one of them? Some people fall into the trap of thinking that if the atheist doesn't know the right answer, then how could they possibly say that the theist has the wrong answer? Well, because you can recognize a wrong answer based upon what you do know. 
Here's an example. Let's say you don't know where your best friend ate lunch today, nor do you know what they ate. Then I come along and confidently say, oh, but I do know. Your best friend ate fried panda at a McDonald's on the surface of Mars. Now, given what you've learned throughout however many years you've been alive, would you have good reasons to disbelieve me? Well, of course. Would those reasons persist, even though you still don't know where your best friend ate lunch? Of course. It doesn't even need to be that ridiculous. Quickly, without a calculator, what's 1,454,323 multiplied by 4,291? Do you know right now? No. Is the answer negative 3? Well, of course not. See, you don't need to know the right answer to be able to immediately recognize the wrong answer. Likewise, with theism, when you say that God is omnipotent and the perfect source of morality, and that he is love, or that he loves everyone and wants nobody to perish, yet the vast majority of people will end up being tortured in hell for all eternity, despite this God's foreknowledge, I will have a whole host of reasons to disbelieve you, given the contradictory nature of your beliefs and your cognitive dissonance that should be glaringly obvious to all but you and your fellow believers, if it weren't for the exasperating mitigation of your confident demeanor. So the problem then becomes realizing when to trust that someone knows what they're talking about. Because if someone is speaking from within their field of expertise, they will tend to speak more confidently. So a layman might have difficulty detecting the difference between an expert and a dilettante, or between a wise man in his field and a confidence man outside of it. It's when the wise person wanders outside of their field of knowledge that they express much more doubt. The best way to tell is through results. If two guys both say that they can fix your car and one of them knows nothing about cars while the other one has been a mechanic for 30 years, then no matter how confident they both seem, only one of them is going to produce actual results. The convenient thing about religion is that it doesn't have to produce results. Nobody can verify God or the afterlife, so anybody can make whatever claims they want about it, and they often do. Religion is a way for fools to feel wise and to appear wise. Nobody can check their work, so to speak, so religion can get away with being confidently wrong. As such, it will continue to attract people, innocent, naive people, who crave answers. They are the mark, and the con men will continue to do what they've always done and gladly give them answers, cheap and easy answers. You are going to get all the good things, and your enemies are going to get all the bad things. Neat, huh? These cheap Easy answers also just so happen to promote certain politics and demonize certain people while privileging certain other people. But I'm sure that has nothing to do with it, right? I'm certainly not saying that all religious people are like these con artists. Many of you recognize the difference between what you know and what you believe. But I want you to beware. That's why I do this. Sometimes these confidence men will tell you that they love you. You're a perfect stranger to them, yet they love you. They say they love everybody. But all that does is make the word love utterly meaningless. Love is meaningful because it is reserved for certain people with whom you have specific relationships. The confidence men don't really love you even though they say they do. I refuse to tell you such lies. The truth is, I don't love you either. But I do care about you very much. The confidence men will tell you that I hate you, and that my hatred is the reason I speak about religion the way that I do. But that couldn't be further from the truth. 
What I hate is seeing these people con you. And that's why I'm so passionate about this. I do this because I care about you.